Python on hardware. This week is a big, 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 big milestone week. Congratulations, the entire community, everyone who works on the newsletter, and most of all, congratulations, Anne, who heads up the newsletter. I used to do it and took it over. We are now up to 250 Python on microcontroller newsletter editions. You can see it every single week. Um, it covers everything python hardware it doesn't have to be circuit python it's micro python it's regular old python i was just like throw new, like language stuff in there like yeah. this or you know yeah python in excel is a thing um there's a lot of python in, in our in our lives when i was doing an article about um open hardware certifications lots of python um happened to be used for the way i was getting data out um so you can check out all the stuff um there's events that are going on it's um projects that the community is up to. If you want to see what we think is the big trend that's going on in hardware scripting languages on microcontrollers, there is no better resource. So uh, big ups to Anne. It's a lot of work every single week. Uh, doesn't cost anything. There's no ads. We have a completely separate site called Adafruit Daily that uh, you can go to and uh, separate because we don't want your customer information mixed up with newsletter stuff because people should sign in to a site to buy stuff and there should be another place for newsletters and more and you shouldn't get spammed. Um, but part two of our Python and hardware this week is some CircuitPython news. We have, I think, um, one of the bigger things that's gonna change microcontrollers for makers, which is um, being able to have all sorts of shapes and uh, easy ways to get stuff on display. So, Lady Ada, you got a demo this week. Yes. What is going on? Because we've been publishing round displays, what square displays, bar displays. What's, what's going on? What's, what's going, going on, on, on with all these displays? And why is this such a big deal? Okay. And why does this little espressive entity have a hat? What's going on? I know. Well, he's friendly. All right. She's friendly. I don't know if it's here. It's friendly. Um, okay. So, if you go to the overhead, um, I have a do, demo. Do, 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 and this do, do, is actually GIF.io. Um, so, this is a GIF that is being uh, drawn from the memory inside this whoop, one board, one board fell, um, ESP32 S3 board. And this is a, um, the S3 has a special peripheral that allows it to drive uh, what are called like dot clock or RGB TTL displays. This display is 720 by 720 pixels. It has capacitive touch as well, although we don't have that uh working just yet we're gonna you know we're gonna do that next um this is the capacitive touch chip and um you know basically when you're using displays um like the ili 9341 or st 7781 uh st 7789 those displays don't get any bigger than 320 by 240. but what if you want to drive like big displays or round displays um, or bar displays, those tend to use this 40 pin RGB TTL uh, interface. And not a lot of microcontrollers support them because you need a lot of memory. You have to buffer the entire image. Um, and it's like, you know, getting into the two megabytes of video RAM required. But the ESP32 S3 has, this one in particular has eight megabytes of PS RAM, which is plenty of PS RAM to um, have it drive this display. Now you're not gonna get like, you know, they're not gonna be able to play like you know full speed video and it uses almost all the pins um so it's definitely for you know if you have a project that's very display focused and you want to drive these large images uh large image displays it's not good for okay i want to have i2s also and i also want to have the sd card and i want this display and i want tons of sensors like the, there is a limitation but um this is one of the few few microcontrollers out there that can even drive these displays so making it work with circuit python will make it really really easy because usually it's quite hard to wire these up and configure them and initialize them uh so we're going to have example code uh for all of them this is a square display but you know as i mentioned and you'll see later in the show we have round bar half round displays um seven inches uh you know high density three inches we have this gigantic round one that's like, you know, uh, four inch diagonal. So it's like, you know, the size of a dinner plate. Um, it's very interesting stuff because this is I've, I've had these displays for a while. Actually, I had this in my bin for a couple of years waiting until there was a way for me to drive them. OK, and so um, stay tuned to um, pretty much everywhere we publish because it's happening fast 
every day we're making more progress across all these different displays. We have cool new ideas. We have um, round displays that can do stuff with Wi-Fi. So that's pretty much unlocks everything. It's going to be neat. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, that is our Python on hardware news for this week. Don't forget, once again, sign up for the newsletter, deliver it every single week. If you see Anne online, say good work, Anne. Awesome. 250. It's a lot. Yeah. All right. It's time to talk about some open source.